Hi, my name is Tamara Lee, and I was super excited and incredibly honored to be asked to do a U of R TED Talk, which unfortunately, with the world being what it is today and us all in seclusion, you are joining me from my bedroom. But the honor and privilege of being able to do this and the message that I found in writing it and um, talking about it has been very profound, and I still wanted to have the opportunity to share it. So, welcome to my in my room live and live from my bedroom version of a ted talk um again i said my name is tamara lee um but since apparently tamara is extremely difficult to pronounce um originally all of my friends and now just about everybody who knows me calls me tam so when um friends want advice or my staff steps into my office i often end our conversations with um thank you for attending my tam talk so Thank you for attending my TAM talk, which is a TED talk um, about striking the match. When I think about striking the match or finding purpose in my life or life in general, I equate that to finding your passion, that thing that burns so deeply in your soul that you can't, despite fear and sometimes good sense, um, turn it off. You have to take action because every cell in your body won't let you sit still. I know that many people struggle with finding that thing um, that thing that, that moves you, that thing that is worth fighting for. But I kind of had the opposite problem because from like birth, everything was the thing. Um, I just had that strike of passion in me that knew that it was there to fight for myself, um, for my family and for the community as a whole. Um, that thing for me was everything. The first moment I remember participating in any type of activism, I had written like letter on top of letter to the county, I think at the time um, when I was eight years old, because I was very upset about them enacting a bait and switch program to lure and shoot um, the excess deer in the park. I didn't have any particular attachment to deer. It just seemed wrong and it was something I felt like I needed to fight for. This then carried on in my life. I went to a very strict Catholic high school and I was that person who was starting sit-ins and walkouts um, to protest the fact that they made my friend who had in a act of teenage rebellion shaved her head and um, they wanted her to wear a wig and so I wasn't having it and so I fought for that and then another friend fought the student council president and so we wrote petitions to get her reinstated um I would just like to say that all of those women turned out to be lovely individuals that I'm still in touch with so that fight was definitely worth it um either way I was that kid and I know the nuns hated my entire life but I was born to be a rabble rouser um, as they say, well-behaved women don't often make history, and I definitely believe that to be the case. Um, it's funny, though, that I, I really think it's as blatant as that. It's more about just tuning into that thing, um, that thing that drives you into action that you just can't turn off. Um, it's funny, though. For me, I became a wife and a mom at a very early age. I was 19, 20 years old, and then I, to a large degree, lost that fire. I became Zaire's mom, and when my marriage fell apart and I was left alone to figure out how to feed and clothe this little person um, that seemed to think that I was supposed to be taking care of him, um, I was tired. It, it took a lot of energy and time to just figure that out and be the best mom that I could be. So, so I lost a lot of that fire, even though it was such a huge part of who I was as a person. Um, and then something happened. Um, something happened that trumped my focus on just survival. On February 26, 2012, Trayvon Martin, an African-American teenager, was walking through his father's gated community with a 99-cent Arizona iced tea and a pack of Red Skittles. Um, and he was followed, confronted, and gunned down by an armed adult man who was the self-appointed neighborhood watchman. His defense was that he was in fear of his life because the ch this child was black and scared him after he, the shooter, approached him, the child, in the dark with a gun. I remember waiting a long time to read that story, to look into it, and I knew exactly why. Um, at the time, I had a, a young son um, who if he was a bit older, would have looked a lot like Trayvon Martin. And I consciously knew that it was going to take the wind out of me to read that story because I knew that this child could be anybody's child. He could be my child. It was actually a sentiment that Obama at the time had um, had mirrored himself that if he had a son, he would look much less tra like Trayvon. So 
Um, when I finally read into the story, I was, of course, horrified and heartbroken. Um, Sabrina Fulton, his mom, I, I felt every tear that she dropped um, in anguish and anger um, because I knew that this could be my son, could have been my son too, and could be my son in a few years. Actually, looking back now, uh, my son is now the age that Trayvon was when he was murdered, and he does look a lot like what Trayvon looked like at the time. Um, but I slowly started being engaged in some Facebook and social media conversations about what had happened, and the topic that kept coming up was why couldn't we do something? Um, the people in Florida were starting to stand up. They were um, starting to march, and they were starting to gather, and people um, wanted to know why we couldn't do it here, and in my mind, there wasn't any reason that we couldn't do it here. It's a little-known fact that for whatever reason, um, there's more people from Sanford, more people from Sanford, Florida, which is where the incident took place, have migrated to Rochester, New York than any other single place in the country. And I don't know why that's the case. We have a strong Florida connection here. Most of my family is from Florida as well. Um, a lot of them grew up, my dad grew up about an hour outside of where Trayvon was murdered. And maybe that's what it was that, that um, sparked so many people to want to take action. So I had called a couple of my friends and said, you know, let's see if we can do this march. Um, so we called our um, councilman and said, hey, can we do this thing? And he was good enough to make way for us to be able to do it. So we were planning that if we could get maybe 100 people there, it would have been a wild success. Um, we would have been excited by that. We would have felt accomplished. Um, that was the moment in history where people were really pushing um, the feds to come in and take over the case because at the time, the Florida... Um, government um, was not interested in pursuing uh, a case against George Zimmerman so the voices mattered and hearing nationwide voices mattered um, to whether that was gonna happen or not so I called a few of my friends and we started putting it together maybe four days um, we spent pushing on social media and making plans and so we got to the space that day and 40 50 people maybe were there and we were excited um, that felt like an impact to us so we got up on the platform beneath the Liberty Pole and we all um, we spoke on a little speaker a little box speaker to the people that had gathered um, there was someone who had came, come to pray for the crowd um, as we marched um, Rochester has this tremendous uh, civil rights history and you know whether it's suffragists or um, Frederick Doug Douglass and, and the historical moves he made here it is profoundly um, weaved into the history of this community however there's also a very strong understanding um, thought process that you also couldn't have a large amount of um, people of color gathered without an incident taking place and whether that's real or imagined it's something that people believe to be true about this town and so we began walking um, it was myself my children um, my baby in a stroller and my my older son walking next to me um, my friends and their children and, and the, our friend that was the city councilman and you may not realize as you walk down downtown to Rochester that it's kind of built on a slope. So for quite a long stretch of the way walking from the Liberty Pole to City Hall, you can't see very far behind you. And so once we passed the convention center and made it onto the bridge, that's actually a low point. And so at that moment, I turned around and it will impact me for the rest of my life. Um, the the sight and the emotions that I felt in that moment, um, that was when my sh my match was lit again, when, when that strike was lit for me again. And I turned around and there were 5,000 people walking behind us, 5,000 women and men and children, young people, old people, with hoodies like Trayvon wore that night, with bags of Skittles and bottles of iced tea and uh, signs that said, am I next? And, you know, that child is all of our children and Zimmerman needs to be prosecuted. People were engaged and they were involved and it meant something to them. And this amount of people that we had assembled in one voice was so incredibly profound to me that I knew in that moment that this was the work that I was gonna be doing for the rest of my life. Um, I had to, I had no choice, it, it just, I had to fight for 
something. I had to fight for me. I had to fight for my children. I had to fight for my community. I didn't know what that looked like at the time, but what I felt in that moment and how profoundly impactful it was for me is something that I will never forget for all of my days. By the time we made it to City Hall, there was about 7,000 people, aerial, aerial pictures um, demonstrated, and we came together that day in a complete peace. Um, not a single incident. The police came and just stood to the side and allowed us to do our thing. There were officials that talked, there were people that talked, people came um, with microphones themselves to be able to address the crowd. And the pictures, when I look at the pictures today, I still get as emotional because not only did we make that stand for this young man that we didn't even know, um, our community came to do it. And so I realized that it only takes a person to start a thing that can change the world. And um, my children were there with me that day and they all, um, they accompany to most of the things that I do because I feel like it's so important for that them to see that and they have become activists in their own right. My son Zaire started an entire sneaker drive campaign that was very impactful for the community and, and Zayden as well. Um, these boys get it and most of the reason they get it is because they have been raised around um, my village of people that, that pour into them and this is the work that they do as well. So it just shows that when you are around people that are doing this work it becomes contagious and those are the groups of people People, small as they may be that truly create change and that spark that match when one is lit it lits, lights a whole crowd around you and, and that's what changes things in the world so I knew in that moment that this was the kind of work that I was going to be doing forever. I just didn't know exactly what that looked like at the time. Um, I'm now the Director of Operations and Public Relations for the Out Alliance, a tremendous agency with a legacy in fighting for LGBTQ plus rights that stretches all the way back to Stonewall. When I stepped in the door, I thought I knew what I was coming here to fight for, and it turns out there was an entirely different battle that wait awaited me. Life has this funny way of showing you these very special challenges that are meant just for you, um, that not only change things in a way that only you could change them, but it also um, puts you in positions to be able to change things for other people. Um, those curveballs are designed just for you, and a lot of times it's just for you to figure out who you really are. Um, there's a misnomer that racism wouldn't be tolerated in spaces where homophobia isn't accepted, and I have learned that that simply isn't true. I've encountered more acts of covert and overt racism within the LGBTQ community than I am a part of than I ever have in all of the other years of my life combined. People of color have been present and often the driving force behind just about every fight for freedom that this nation has ever waged, but they are also often the people that history forgets. When history doesn't record your impact, it often also doesn't value your presence. And so there are many, many tables that I get to sit at at this point in my life that I'm still one of the very few women and almost always the only person of color. Um, today, that's where my flame burns for me. We have worked to change the culture that exists at the Out Alliance to make it not only a safe space for the cisgendered white segment of the LGBTQ population, but reflective of the entire community. The recognition of intersexuality in the LGBTQ population um, and the celebration of where being queer and black meet is a battleground right now, both within and outside of the, our community. In 2019, at least 26 women of color of the transgender experience were violently murdered in this country. They go unseen, unreported, and often misgendered. So through things like our magazine, The Empty Closet, the longest continuously printed LGBTQ-focused publication in the nation, where you rarely, you really very rarely um, saw people of color. Um, we have paid homage to not only the people we lost, but the trans men of color in our community that are doing the work and fighting for the visibility that they deserve and they often have not received. Today, that's where my flame burns. Wherever your passion lies, I encourage you to fan that flame with every fiber of your being. You never know whose voice you will carry with you when you make it to the table. No matter how scary, no matter how many twists and turns your life has taken, that flame will always lead you back to your purpose. And through the twists of life that I have find my, found mine, I serve side by side with people who are at times seen as too black to be gay and too gay to be black. And today it's those voices that I carry with me. Those of us who live on the intersection understand just how important this is um, to be whole, to be accepted in a whole person kind of way that all of the pieces of you matter and all of the pieces of you have value, especially within your own community, is truly, truly 
the most important thing to living a happy, successful life in my mind. This cause, this conversation about intersexuality is, and I anticipate will be the vo the torch that I carry for the remainder of my days. But whatever yours is, whatever that thing is that burns so deeply in your soul and is dying to scream out for change, you let that voice be heard. If not for you, then for every voice around you that will forever remain silenced. It's so important. And we all aren't going to lead a march. And we all aren't going to be prudent for president. And we all aren't going to be on the front line battling. But we all have our place in that. And wherever your place finds you, whatever corner of the world you've been placed in, just know that that's the corner from which you can affect change. So as scary as it is to be that voice, know that you have the opportunity to be that voice. And you, I think, will never regret using that voice, but you may always regret not using it. So I'm blessed to have found that thing, that purpose in me that keeps me going and keeps me fighting. And, and I really hope you find yours. I don't even think you'll have to look that hard. You'll know when all those cells start twitching and telling you that it's time to, to, to make change, to do something. So no matter how big or how small that something is, just having done it is you striking the match, it's you feeding the flame, and then lighting all of the matches that are around you. Some that you may never even know you did. So welcome to my TAM talk. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you are surviving this time caged in. It would be a great time to do some research and to do some soul searching to figuring out where those matches are hidden. God bless.